Good afternoon. Choices Rape Crisis Center, this is Shelley. Yes. Uh. Hi. I. Um. I'm not sure. Uh. It's okay to take some time to find the right words. My name is Shelly, and I use her and she as pronouns. Is this your first time calling the crisis line? Yeah. My friend, she suggested I call. Look this. Everything I say is confidential, right? That's right. What you say to me is kept between you and I. Well, almost everything. If you talk to me about harming yourself or someone else, or about a child being abused, then I have to notify the authorities. Other than those things, this call is just between you and I. We don't give specific information about our callers to anyone else. What kind of information do you need from me? I only need what you want to tell me. I do usually ask people if they like to share their name with me and their pronouns to start, and then we go from there. I'm Kathy. Pronouns? She and her, I guess. I've never been asked that before. I'm glad you called today, Kathy. I ask pronouns so I don't misgender anyone by the sound of their voice. Oh, okay. What else do you need? Well, let's just start with why you called today. You said a friend suggested that you call? Yeah. At lunch today. Stephanie and I were talking and she asked if I was sick. I missed work yesterday. I rarely do that. I wasn't going to tell anyone, but I just needed to talk to somebody and she was right there. And she looked worried. It just came out of my mouth before I even decided to tell her. Mm. It wasn't my fault. I didn't know he thought that we were... <sighs> I only met him a couple of times. I just waved when I recognized him on the street. He walked up to my door, and then he was just still talking, and I was unlocking the door, and before I knew it, we were both inside, and he asked what I had to drink, that he was thirsty. I didn't want to be rude. So I walked into the kitchen to get him some water, and he... He... I'm sorry this happened to you, Kathy. You couldn't have known. But I should have known. I know better than to let strangers in my house. I'm always so safe and I don't trust anyone I don't know. But I'd met Chris before and he seemed friendly. It wasn't your fault. He got himself into your house on purpose. <sighs> he sure did. He barely drank any water. He wasn't thirsty. He put down the glass after, like, a sip, and then just sort of walked around looking at stuff and asking questions, you know, normal questions. Like, he wanted a little tour, and I... I just... just did it. When we got to my room, he said he liked the colors. And I liked that. I just painted a couple of weeks ago and, and redid the whole room. God... I can't even go in there now. I've tried. It's like it's tainted. My comforter. My bed. I don't feel safe. God, I feel so stupid. And he just kept telling me how pretty the room was. How pretty I was. And all of a sudden, he was so close to me, and he, he pulled my arm towards the bed and said we should christen it since it was new. I, I pretended I thought he was joking, but that's when I started to get scared. Before that, I was just kind of annoyed. I, I wanted to change and do some organizing in the spare room. All of a sudden, I knew I, I was in trouble. It can happen that way. All of a sudden, our brains just know there's danger before we're aware of it. Well, I, I pulled my arm away and kind of laughed it off. And he grabbed me. And this time it really hurt. But I tripped and kind of fell on top of him. He got so excited and he said he knew I wanted him. But I didn't. I just tripped when he pulled my arm. He ripped my favorite shirt. It's okay, Kathy. Keep talking if you want to. I'm right here. 
I had on a lacy bra. He said it was sexy. I didn't think it was all that different from any of my other bras, but he was already groping me uh, under my skirt. Didn't even bother to take it off. Just pushed it up, and somehow he was inside me. I, I didn't make another sound. I didn't push him off. I didn't scream. Nothing. He said... He said how good it felt and how he knew I liked his... his cock. And that I was wet. But I wasn't. It hurt. It still hurts. I'm bleeding a little. I'm so sorry he hurts you, Kathy. Nobody deserves what you went through. I didn't even leave the house until this morning. Finally left and said he'd call me. He just put his jeans back on and looked for his keys. I guess they fell out of his pocket. And when he found them, he scooped them up and left. I finally got myself moving. and I locked the door and I put the chain on. Like that was going to help any. I grabbed my robe in the bathroom so I had something on my body. I sat on the couch with a blanket around me. I don't know for how long, but I must have fallen asleep. Wasn't that weird? Like it was nothing. Like like I hadn't just been ra- It's okay to say it if you choose to. Raped. He raped me. And I didn't do any- I didn't fight. I didn't scream. And then I, I just fell asleep. Your body likely needed the sleep to get a break for a bit. You had been through an awful lot, Kathy. Our brains respond for us when we feel threatened. Now, whatever you did to feel better or safe is okay. There's no right way to respond to being assaulted. No? Well, it feels like I should have done something, but I didn't. I turned my phone off, I got in the shower, I scrubbed myself raw over and over, and then I put my robe back on so I wasn't so naked, and fell asleep on the couch again. This morning uh, I got up and went to work. I didn't want to, but I, I guess I didn't know what else to do. And after I told Stephanie, uh, I couldn't think about anything else, so I left work early and I called you. Wait, that's it. That's the whole thing. I'm really glad Stephanie told you about us, and that you decided to call. Can I ask where you are right now? Are you somewhere safe? I'm in my car, outside my house. I don't want to go in, but I don't want to be out here either. He knows where I live. I don't want to get out of my car. He might come back. God, what if he comes back while I'm talking to you? Are all your car doors locked? Yeah, they're locked. I drove around my block a couple times looking to see if he was outside and to work up my nerve to go back in. Okay, so you didn't see him and you're safe in your locked car, is that right? Yes, yes, that's right, but, but I don't know what to do now. It's okay to not know. It's not an easy thing to process. What are the options at this point? Let's talk about your options now. Options. Okay, well, I don't want to go in my house. Uh, I don't know what else. You don't have to go in. There are other options. Earlier you said you were hurting, bleeding a bit. Have you thought about getting medical attention? If I do that, won't they call the police? I don't know if I want to talk to them yet. I just don't know anything right now. I don't even know his last name. The police should only be called if you request it. But if you went to see a doctor, you only have to tell them what you want to. Now, it might be a good thing for you to be seen for your health, but it's your choice. So is reporting to law enforcement. The priority is your safety. Now, do you have any friends or family that you could go to while you're thinking things over and making decisions? No! I haven't lived here for very long. I haven't made any close friends. I only met Chris at a party. Someone had it work for their birthday. I don't even have a doctor yet. Maybe I should get checked, though. You can go to any hospital emergency room that's close by if you choose. I want you to know, you don't have to go through all this alone. If you do choose to go to the hospital, they will call an advocate from our sexual assault crisis center, whether you choose to have a rape kit done or not, and whether you call the police or not. Now, if you don't want to go to the hospital, that's okay too. And we can just keep talking. It's up to you. I'll follow your lead. They'll send someone to support me? 
at the hospital, even if I don't want a rape kit. Absolutely. You can ask for someone when you first get there, but they should call us automatically if you tell them you've been sexually assaulted. Uh, I think that's what I'll do. I want to talk to someone about what I do now, and if they can do anything about my bleeding and pain. I don't know if I want them to do a rape kit. I, I just want to know if I'm okay, physically. That decision will be up to you. Now, they'll have good information about your options, and an advocate will be there as soon as they can. They'll be able to talk to you about our services, and of course you're free to call the crisis line back at any point that you need. We're open 24 hours a day. Do you know where the nearest hospital is? Yes, I'll go there now. Thanks. I may call back later, is that okay? Yes, you can call us anytime, Kathy. We will do our best to help you, however you may need us. All survivors are welcome here. Thanks. Bye.